Hey everybody, Dr. Osborne here. And in our last video, we talked about does gluten cause arthritis? I showed you a number of research studies confirming that as fact as well. Um, shared with you some clinical anecdote and case studies. I promised you though that I would cover the next video on grain inflammation, and that's what we're going to be covering today. So what is grain inflammation? Well, let's set the stage first. So most people, when they have inflammation, are treated with medications, and, uh, and that's pretty much the standard of care. No matter where you go, you go see a doctor, that's what they're going to give you. They're going to give you some degree or some type of medication, and this is a big problem, and here's why. Let's just look at what the CDC director, Thomas Frieden, has to say on the matter. He says, and I quote, we know of no other medication routinely used for a non-fatal condition that kills patients so frequently. We hope to see fewer deaths from opiates. That's the bottom line. These are really dangerous medications that carry the risk of addiction and death. Now, if we look at prescription painkiller sales and deaths, correlate them over time, you can see the more prescribed that we see, the more deaths that we see. So those two curves kind of go together pretty scary. And if we look at overall medical error as the third leading cause of death, most of these deaths are actually being, or actually as a result of prescriptive medications, not on accident, like not the wrong medicine, but just the right medicine. That's how dangerous this business is. So that's why it's important for you to understand when we're talking about chronic pain and inflammation, I want you to understand how diet and food can play a role in that. And that's why I created the grain inflammation cycle so you could better understand it. So if you look at the diagram over here on the right-hand side, you're going to see a funnel. And there are a number of different things in this funnel. These are all different things that grain can do or that grain contains. So we're talking about heavy metals, excessive omega-6, leaky gut, grain causes leaky gut, excessive carbohydrates, mold and mycotoxins, gluten. I'm sure you've heard of gluten-free if you've been listening to me for any length of time. ATIs, this is a special kind of protein called an amylase trypsin inhibitor that can cause inflammation. Genetically modified organisms, the GMO grains, the GMO pesticides, and then down here, the pesticides. All these things here add up to an inflammatory process. So inflammation, right? And that inflammation is the precursor to pain. That's what I want you to understand. So what you eat matters. What you put in and what you eat and what it contains matters. So diet is very, very critical because diet, especially relating to grain, can trigger an inflammatory response. Now, the first line of defense against this for most people, they go to their doc, they're in pain, they get medication, right? And, and the medication in and of itself is designed to stop the inflammation. Now, depending on the type of medication, there certainly are different kinds of medication. In this diagram, I'm really referring to steroids, getting corticosteroids, whether it's injection or oral medication. That increases the cortisol response. Now, understand when you take a, a steroid, when you take a corticosteroid, that comes with some side effects. One of them is muscle loss. That's why this diagram goes from increased cortisol response to muscle loss. Now, you get muscle loss, generally speaking, you get weight gain because muscle sets your metabolic function. Muscle, how much muscle you have, lean mass, that helps set your metabolic rate. You've heard of metabolism before. Some people say, I have a slow metabolism. The reality is some people have a faster, slower metabolism, but the more muscle you have, the faster of a metabolism you have. So when you take a drug that reduces your muscle, you actually slow down your metabolism, you can gain weight. Now, when you gain weight, you get more joint compression. That can lead to pain, and that leads to more inflammation. And that's why, folks, this is a cycle. It's an inflammatory cycle that doesn't end unless you interject, unless you make a change. And there are a couple ways we can impact this cycle. One is to change our diet. We change the input, we stop the inflammation, we don't need the medication. And that's the big, big takeaway here. Now, if we follow this cycle around, I said earlier, joint compression and pain leads to more inflammation, but it also leads to more muscle loss. And again, that, that's kind of a cycle within a cycle because when you have joint compression and pain, you're not exercising, you're on the couch. Your, your movement is hindered because of the pain and that leads to, remember, atrophy, muscle atrophy, or something that doctors call disuse 
atrophy. When you don't use it, you lose it. So when you're in chronic pain, you're not thinking about running a mile. You're not thinking about going to the CrossFit gym or doing push-ups. You hurt. And so you stop exercising and you induce atrophy of your muscles, again, leading to more weight gain, and it just creates a cycle. So how does this impact the brain and nervous system? This is very important because your mind is very, very important as you're trying to heal. So when you have increased cortisol, that elevates your blood sugar. That's something that is another side effect of increase in cortisol. Now that excessive cortisol also interferes with vitamin D, calcium, and magnesium. It can cause deficiencies of those nutrients. So how does that, how does that affect your brain? Calcium and magnesium are electrolytes. They help regulate how your nerves communicate to each other. And calcium and magnesium deficiency, aside from causing muscle spasm, cramps, and pain, can also cause depression. And that can affect the way you heal. Because when you're depressed, again, we're going back to the cycle. When you're depressed, you're not wanting to exercise, right? So it's affecting your, your movement through your mind. And that lack of movement reduces your cerebrospinal fluid. And it's important, how does this affect your brain? The cerebrospinal fluid is that sack of fluid surrounding your brain and spinal cord that helps detoxify your brain. So when you're not exercising and you're not moving, your brain is becoming more and more toxic. It's not taking out the garbage, right? And so that lack of movement hinders that CSF, but it also hinders lymphatic flow. So it causes your body to hold on to more toxins, not just your brain, but your entire body. Then we come down here to pain medications Look, they don't it stop the influx of grain-based poisons. So if you're eating this in your daily diet, that's not being stopped by the medication. But they also come with a plethora of detrimental side effects, including, as I showed you earlier, death. That's one of the big ones. Addiction, that's another very big one. Intestinal erosion. So if we're talking about like ibuprofen, naproxen, Celebrex, the non anti-inflammatories cause intestinal erosion and leaky gut. Leaky gut leads to autoimmune disease, and many of these forms of arthritic pain are autoimmune disease. You see how this is just another cycle layered in on top of another of the grain inflammation cycle. And then we have this, this nutritional deficiencies that can occur with pain medications. As I showed you up here, vitamin D, calcium, magnesium are all inhibited by steroids. But, you know, for example, ibuprofen causes folate deficiency and vitamin C and iron deficiency. Um, you've got other medications that are very common, like Tylenol, causes glutathione deficiency. Glutathione is needed to detoxify. So again, there's always a cost. I want you to understand that anytime you take a medication for pain, there's always a cost. And so the real solution is in finding what the origin of that pain is. That's why we come back to the grain inflammation cycle, because again, shut off the input. You can stop the inflammation. If you can stop the inflammation, you can stop the pain. And that's what's important to know. Now, this next slide I put in for you research geeks who wanted me to prove what I was saying was true or not, right? So if you want to go read more about the literature, if you want to read more about how this is true, you can look these journals up and, uh, and you can go read these studies that I'm using uh, to help you understand this topic. And last of all, Make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, like our channel, so that you can get more video updates. We put them out on a daily basis for you, so don't miss an update. Just hit subscribe or like. This is Dr. Osborne, founder of Gluten Free Society and drpeterosborne.com, wishing you excellent health. Have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.